Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. Welcome in, Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you for those that are uh, following us on Facebook. This is the podcast, however, so for those that uh, have not downloaded the podcast, if you're watching us on Facebook or um, later listening to the podcast, pass it along. We'd love to, we get thousands and thousands of downloads a month and it's been exciting for almost eight years now and uh, we're numbering these, which is interesting too, Jack. I look at that every once in a while. I think we're at, uh, what is it, maybe 1,600 and something now. It's like 1,600 at-bats. Yeah, that's right. Amazing. Should be pretty good by yeah. now. <laughs> it's got like a 400 it's batting average at this point. point. That's right. <laughs> So we're going to continue the show as we always do. The focus is education and information. It doesn't matter really what format. So normally uh, it's real estate related. However, we've introduced in the last year or so some different segments to the show and some different angles in terms of more community, business related. Uh, Jack joined me a year or so ago when we started a show about uh, starting something. It's so going to be two years next month. Yeah, matter of fact, yeah. Uh, Stephanie... We have a Stephanie now, my daughter, that's running right. the show, but Stephanie that does the program, yes. she said it's, uh, I could be wrong about this, but I think it's been 62 or 63 shows you did. Really? Okay. So that tells you. Wow. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm so sure to up get, there. I deserve to get into the major that's leagues, right. get out of the minor leagues. We're going to give you another strike. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. So it's been, uh, it's been fun. We've got a lot of good feedback and the idea is education and information and, um, you know, for those that uh, listen to the podcast, download the podcast, we get some, some good feedback from that. The show that we did a year or so ago when we started was starting something, right? And then we started last year growing, growing your business. Right. And we're kind of, we're going to continue that theme, I'm guessing, because so. there's so much to growing your business. There's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot to it, and there's lots of variations mm-hmm. of how growth <clears throat> is achieved organically versus acquisition versus all kinds of other things. And we're, at this point, talking about new laws and regulations. I think we should devote a few shows to that because there are so many new laws and they do have real impact. And the impact is felt in many different ways that lots of people don't come to realize until it's too late, mm-hmm. which is litigation right. and you know, all worst case class action litigation. Right. And so we really, <coughs> when you're in the area of trying to advise, you try to have the big binoculars on mm-hmm. to look ahead. You're always trying to scout. And, you know, I try to educate younger lawyers. I say, if you're in litigation, fundamentally, as the counsel for the company, you didn't do enough scouting. And mm-hmm. you're always going to be, I'm not going to say blamed in the legal liability side, mm-hmm. but more like, you know, a little bit of anticipation would have been worth a lot. A little bit of cure would have been worth a lot of remedy. Mm-hmm. Or however people yeah. say that, you know, it's right. in time, saves nine. Yeah. And, you know, gosh, if we just did this, or what's the famous mm-hmm. one? If the lack of a nail, the shoe oh. is loose, <laughs> the shoe get falling off, right. the horse fell, the horse <clears throat> fell, we lost right. the battle, we lost the battle, <laughs> we lost the war. You know, that's a classic kind of situation. You see it every day in life. Yeah, you do. So this show, we're going to do part two, and this is, this is new regulations or new laws right. and regulations. Right? And, and the one I want to focus on, last week we talked about the Privacy Act. Right. I want to focus on the contractor versus employment law, mm-hmm. which is really something that has been you know, sort of a tsunami that has been building for a while because the gig economy starts to change the way people look at the service provider. Mm. That's a generic term. Like right now, your daughter, lucky to have her here because she's helping us immensely. I don't know if she's an employee or a contractor, (laughs) but she's certainly a service provider and she's giving us the advantage of the technical prowess that she has to run this equipment Mm -hmm. and to get this on the air. Well, 
you probably haven't thought a lot about. Well, usually with a family member, you don't <laughs> have to think about it, but believe me, I've seen a lot of those stories. And you know, I just got a call from one the other day, and it was a classic brother versus brothers versus oh, boy. mom and dad. And oh man, it's just like the worst when you see, <coughs> and you know, you start hearing it, and the person on the phone's like, You've heard this story before, wow. haven't you? And I said, Yeah, unfortunately, if you've been practicing 40 years, you're going to hear that story. Just, just watch the story if you get a chance. Bloodline on Netflix. Yes. That, that kind of tells yes. the story about the, the family that's gone off the deep end. Anyway, Is that right? Go okay, so i got to <laughs> break that down because you always have the greatest picks from Netflix. In fact, I watched the other one you suggested, and my wife was like, how did you... How'd you get that? I said, I got it from Joe, man. Which one was that? Bosch was that. Oh, the guy I love Bosch. Bosch. He's like yeah. the police detective with the, with the, broken, <laughs> good? With the broken family yeah. that his wife is still sort of helping right. him. Like, so, so the ex wife is still helping him. <laughs> Daughter's in the middle. Like, it's, it's just a classic, a good realistic show, thing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, I have to say that there's a lot of stuff that doesn't get to the top until there's enough viral discussion yeah, right, about it. Right. And I want to make a point about that because it's an example of, you know, we almost always say something about Tesla and Elon yeah, Musk. Right. And the reason is it's such a great success story, it American is. success story. By a non-American, remember, he was born That's in true. South Africa. So yeah, it's an immigrant, forget about it's that, an immigrant yeah. story. Yeah. He wasn't really the founder. There was actually a different group. That's the other part people get. Mm. He's like a third co-founder. The car, the original idea for the company, was not mm. really his. But let's give Elon credit because I guess the stock got to $500 a share. And, you know, it dawned on me why there's an argument for why that's not fictitious. And let me mm. just okay. cut to this because yeah. it's going to tie this employment okay. versus contractor in about a second. Just bear with me. All right. So you drive a Tesla and you, if you're lucky enough to get to a charging station, you can plug in. Mm -hmm. So I drive to your office. It's great because it's a charging station yeah. within two blocks, yeah, which right. is wonderful. It's raining out, but let's put that as a footnote. Yeah. It's usually sunny <laughs> California. It's great. You get to the charging spot and there's one charging spot of 20 that's open. By the way, the app tells you that there is. Okay. So it actually is informing yeah. you. Again, it's like the binoculars telling you, okay, there's a spot. You pull into the spot, you know, they haven't quite created the robot that plugs the car directly yeah. in. That's going to happen. You never know, because you know people are like so lazy, they don't even want to get out of the car yeah. to plug it in. My wife says, you know, I can't believe you keep getting out of the car to plug that in. And she's willing to gas up her gas <laughs> guzzler, so she doesn't mind, you know, going to the gas station. But the point is, you plug the car in, and then you leave the spot, you start walking. And that as you walk, you run into another Tesla owner, like within five seconds wow. of leaving your car. And the guy says, you just plugged your car in, right? I said, yeah. He said, well, you plugged it into one that doesn't work. Oh, I said, how no. do you know? They said, because I just plugged it into oh. that spot, and I just moved. I said, but the car shows its charge. He says, yeah, there's something really oh, broken boy. about it. He says, you're going to find out you plugged it in, and oh. you didn't get any juice at all. And what I thought to myself at that point, well, that guy's a service provider. Mm -hmm. He gave me a piece of advice. He said, by the way, I'm leaving so you can take my spot that I know works because my app mm -hmm. says my car got charged. But when I was in the previous spot, the app said it didn't get charged. So pull out. So he's being a nice, yeah. a nice citizen. Sure. A nice Tesla citizen. There's a higher class of people driving these cars. You want to be around a class ah. of people that's going to be cooperative. So what's the meta message for Tesla? We're developing this community of customers that take mm -hmm. care of each other. Mm. You want to be part of that community. So, so far I haven't seen... Now, you know, I'm going to, uh, Elon, I'm going to give this to you for free. The if you're listening, <laughs> there's a Tesla cult. <laughs> Interesting. And they volunteer service and time and attention to each other. Mm. That is the very definition of goodwill, mm -hmm. and anyone that's being a service provider is effectively helping you, your organization, your company, grow its mm -hmm. goodwill. That's really what grows in value in the long run. Okay. And how you classify them, and what Tesla doesn't have on its books mm -hmm. effectively, is all those customer service providers mm -hmm. that are out there helping other customers and giving them good information about how to use the car and really how to use the system. Mm. It's like the Apple ecosystem. Yeah. You know, Apple's fanatics, fanatic customers, they'll show you all these tricks with your iPhone. You had never, no idea. But they don't get paid for it. No. They're not independent contractors. They're not employees. 
They're customers that are fanatics. Mm. That's a whole different class. And what the law is doing is saying, yeah, those people are customers. You get that as a freebie. Maybe at some point they actually do so much for you that you should pay them. But they're not on the books in the sense of a that's, payroll. That's sense, an right? interesting dynamic. So why yes. do you think the? And I see that too. I, I, I hear yes. what you're saying. So why do you think they were able to develop this this interesting cult or membership, if you will, yes. versus like BMW, Mercedes, yes. and Maserati? What, what would be because the difference? Because there's a sharing of the electrical posts oh, okay. that represents a non. We are boycotting gas stations. Oh, okay. They know what they're doing. I see. They're creating I see. an affinity okay. around big oil should die. Okay. We don't want to have more carbon going into the atmosphere, mm -hmm. although how the electricity is generated. Responsible is, citizens. Know, we're responsible citizens. Yeah. We pay a lot more for our cars up mm -hmm. front, but theoretically we get the payoff in the long run mm -hmm. from the lack of maintenance okay. and the fact that the electricity, if you buy it early enough, is free. And so people are willing to volunteer mm -hmm. information. I mean, when's the last time you went to the gas station, the guy volunteered, you know, that gas pump really is pumping a lot slower than mm -hmm. the pump over here. I mean, they really don't do that. You get right. your gas anonymously, you take off. You don't want to interact with anyone at the gas station, it seems mm -hmm. to me. Tesla's developed this community of people that often go into the quasi-coffee shop. That's what I think the next step will be. Tesla will open up coffee shops or coffee stands. I can see that around their chargers stations. because they've got a community that's creating buzz and the only thing missing is where's the beverage maybe it should be a wine place <laughs> something else but the way i wanted to tie it into ab5 okay. which is the new <laughs> assembly bill that became law effective january 1 2020 or mm -hmm. 2020 like it's yeah. the bell there right wow. when you were a kid and you used to look at the clock three o'clock when is it going to be three o'clock <laughs> i want to get out of here right now you're like Man, the time just goes, yeah. where does it go? And now it's 2020. Really did now say to California employers, mm -hmm. you have to pay strict attention to who your service provider is because misclassifying them can r give rise to big penalties, five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 or more mm -hmm. in penalties, plus back pay, statutory mm -hmm. damages, attorney's fees, so they've loaded up this thing that said, you have to pass a three-part test to evaluate, is this person truly an independent contractor or are they an employee? Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's take an example, a really simple example. I'm an independent employee. When you hire me as your lawyer, I'm not your employee. Mm -hmm. You're not my employer. I'm your service provider as a contractor. Why? Right. Test A. You don't really control how I do the legal work. I decide what to read. I decide what to write. I decide what to file. Mm -hmm. I probably will show you, discuss with you, sort of get you to agree this is the way we're going to take it. But I'm the captain of the ship, and I get to drive the ship. So you, they independently hire you, so to speak. Independently. independently yeah. And really, I have independent judgment, independent duties, right. independent responsibilities. And you can't say to me, just file that false affidavit. Right. I'll just say, get sense. lost. You know, you crazy. Well, I'm going to fire you. Okay, you can fire me, but, you know, I'm not your employee. Right. I'm not going to follow whatever you say to do. I'm going to follow my profession. So that's, that's part A. That's test A. That's, that's, part part a. A. that's okay. test A. Okay. This is notion of free of control of the employer. I'm not okay. just your hands. Although there are a lot of people, maybe Rudy Giuliani is really an employee <laughs> of Donald Trump. I often say to myself, I mean, maybe that guy is just the hands of the president, and maybe he doesn't mm -hmm. issue any independent no. judgment. I don't know. You can have a separate political <laughs> discussion. But that's part A. Part B is, is what I'm doing the usual course of my profession kind of like independent of if I were your in-house counsel? Mm -hmm. Because I could, uh, I could pass part A and be independent in the sense that my legal judgment, but I could work for you in-house. Mm. I'm going to fail Part B if I work in-house because the usual course of my profession is serving others, not just you, mm -hmm. but many others in providing legal advice and in dealing with legal problems. Mm -hmm. So the classic Part B is like, well, you could be an in-house lawyer, then you're an employee because mm -hmm. you failed Part B. Okay. Even though you passed Part A, you have to do all three. Right. You have to pass A, B, and C. And now here's the kicker for C. The kicker for C is is the customary nature of the work 
something that you have regulated into a practice or a profession? Mm -hmm. Or is this really something that you're kind of captive and devoted mm -hmm. to just one <coughs> party? Okay. So let's take your daughter doing this work. Unless she has other customers, or unless she's really independent mm -hmm. of your demands and schedules, okay. she starts to look like she fails all three. Right, because sure. she, part A, is under your direction and control. Mm -hmm. Part B, she's in your offices, probably only using your offices with equipment that mm -hmm. is not really hers, that stays in your right. office. Right. And C is she's not really doing this kind of outside the course of your particular radio boot. So mm -hmm. it starts to look like she's the in-house radio technician. Right. Yeah. Now, she's your daughter, so she's probably not going to report to you. And, Everything's so aesthetic in that sense, but the part D that a lot of people don't put down, which people just say, well, this is the ABC test, but there's a part D that sort of says, well, is this an important enough independent work that there's a separate LLC that's been created for the practice? So in the practice of law, it's either a professional corporation or what's called a limited liability partnership, right. limited <coughs> liability law partnership, LL, or sometimes LLLP. LL, yeah. It has all those letters. It's designed to say this is a separate firm. So the reason I want to say all this is because Uber and Lyft and a host of other gig economy worker kind of places have said, we're not going to follow that AB5. We're not going to follow the ABC test. We're just a technology platform. These people are just using our software. They run their own business. Mm -hmm. But the reality is there's so many rules and regulations that they impose on their drivers that they fail, arguably fail the A test. Uh, they arguably fail the B test because most folks, although I guess there are some people that are doing both Uber and Lyft at the same time, yeah. but most of them operate under one shingle. Mm -hmm. You know, even if they operate under two, they could be part-time employees for Lyft and part-time employees for Uber and still be effectively employees. Right. Like the in-house counsel at one company and an in-house counsel or the other one is the the guy who's the CEO at both Twitter and the CEO at Square, mm. he's an employee at both places. Mm. He's the part-time CEO at these <laughs> the big companies, right? Right. So, so you get to this question of how are they going to solve this problem? And one suggestion was they're going to give the drivers an option to create an LLC and try to look more like you're really running a black car service mm. for whoever, like a million different players mm -hmm. and look more like it's your business and we're just a marketing company mm -hmm. and hire us as your lead generator but okay. the customer is yours now that's an interesting concept who owns the customer when mm -hmm. uber when you use the uber app yeah. is it okay for the uber driver to hand you a business card or the lyft driver or any of these other companies that says, look, I'm actually also a black car driver in my mm -hmm. own separate LLC. Mm -hmm. Call me direct, text me direct, and I'll give you priority and discounts. We'll just cut Uber out of this. i got to believe the rules and regulations of both Uber and Lyft try to say, don't do that. Yeah. We want people to use the app. Now, a lot of people like using the app because they like the transaction happens through their credit card, and they get to see that nice graphic yeah. and so on. But there are a lot of people who are like, hey, if I trust you, I'll text you. That's a good question. I'll run a test by you now and yes. see what's happened. The real life yes. stuff. So for sure. years, you know, I'm in the mortgage business, yes. and so there, there's we've been faced with this several times. We go out to get the client, secure the relationship, come in. They come because they trust us. They want to yes. do business with us. Yes. We close a loan. It could be closed with us in house. Could be closed, sold to Wells Fargo. Right. It could be sold to anybody. Whose customer is that? that? That's always argument. Like when a loan officer yes. independently leaves, yes. although we're W two. Yes. When they leave, the question is: Is that your database? Yes. Is that your list, or is that right? So most of those uh, <coughs> employers will have very strong employment Contracts. agreements. Okay, agreements. Yeah. Trying to own the customer, but the reality is that you get to announce legally that you have left and that they want to use you. So there's these exceptions oh, okay. in the law of unfair competition that's okay. associated with, hey, that customer list is owned by the employer. But if I want to run the simplest version as a full-page ad, right. I no longer work for ABC Loan Company. I work for XYZ Loan mm -hmm. Company. And they start calling XYZ Loan Company because they like working with you. You can't stop that. That's mm -hmm. freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. And the cases in California in particular which want to promote mobility, 
and this idea of freedom from constraints have gone so far as to say maybe the employee, the former employee, mm -hmm. can make an email announcement. Mm -hmm. Certainly on LinkedIn you can. Well, yeah. Think about what LinkedIn has done. Yeah. Make an announcement. That's all of your contacts LinkedIn, on Twitter. LinkedIn, all yeah. of them become like an email yeah. uh, notification. And some have even goes so far as to say, well, maybe you can make an email notification before he leaves. Before he leaves. Like literally from the employer's computer, which of course we wince at it to say, wait a minute, that just sounds like taking a risk. And they're like, he just wants to tell them, don't expect to me to answer the phone on Monday. I'm leaving. It's Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. I'm done. I'll be at some other place. Now, we would never recommend to someone leaving that they do that because it winces of... <laughs> You're taking unfair advantage, yeah. and of course, you know when people start feeling that way, they file lawsuits and right. ask questions later. But the short answer is, there is suggested law in the cases that look, the customers need to know that someone's left. Mm. And I called the lawyer, in fact, in Florida. I wanted to give her a case, and of course, the law firm was like, "Yeah, she's gone." <laughs> I said, "Where did she go?" She said, "We don't know." I said, "Well, do you have a forwarding number or anything like that?" No. no. We want to talk to one another lawyer here. <laughs> and I said, no, I want to talk to her. And they're like, we can't help you. Why? When I linked in, I found out where she was. Yeah. I mean, she had not sent the email update notification, mm -hmm. but I thought to myself, she could have mm -hmm. and said, look, my last day, it could be a very polite thing. My last day at this firm will be this. Yeah. In the future, look forward to seeing more about me on LinkedIn or something like that. Yeah. You can't stop that, right? It's true. That's the way it is. Okay. But think about it from the point of view of if you're the employer, the correct classification becomes very important to comply with law. And if you don't comply with it, what I'll call the beginning of a cancer gets created that can get worse and worse over time. Mm -hmm. So the classic example is Microsoft hired a bunch of what they thought were independent contractors mm -hmm. to do a bunch of programming work. They were wrong on the classification. Years later, the class action lawyers discovered what they had done filed a class action lawsuit, and of course they won. And they got a big settlement out of Microsoft because fundamentally those decisions tend to be like, this is what we did, this is what we always did, it made sense back then, probably not the most correct set of binoculars right. looking at what's happening in California versus, let's say, the state of Washington versus, say, the state of Oregon. Sometimes the laws vary between the three. Most mm -hmm. times they're consistent. And then all of a sudden, a class action layer that says all these employees from all these places were really full-time or part-time employees and not contractors. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to do withholding. We were supposed to pay them overtime. We were supposed to give them double or triple time for work on holidays and weekends or whatever. And we owe them for meal breaks and lunch breaks and all this other mm -hmm. stuff. And it becomes this ginormous class action case that you say, we have no reserves for this, and typically no insurance. Uh, so it's like an immediate hit. Now, if you're Microsoft, it's like you know a hiccup. Right. It's not really a big right. deal. But if you're a small <coughs> company, mm -hmm. and you know this comes up a lot. The other day, I got a call from a woman that said, well, you know, I hired a bunch of people who are all independent contractors. I started talking to her about ABC tests. She was like, I think I fell all three. I won't name who she is. Mm -hmm. She says, I don't know how to fix it. Well, you have to make them employees. Well, once I make them employees, don't they get to say, mm. hey, what about the past? And then once they talk about the past, how do I solve that? And it's not like the company is so profitable. Yeah. And do I have to then maybe give them some stock or give them some stock? You know, they yeah. create this hornet's nest. Yeah. And before the passage of <laughs> AB5 with the statutory reaffirmation of a famous case called Dynamax that was decided a couple of years earlier that reversed the case called Borello that sort of gave you more loosey-goosey ability to do stuff mm -hmm. by contract where maybe it's one way, maybe it's the other, but if you put it in writing that they're an independent contract, they're probably going to be presumed that way, no more. Mm. But because of the sort of revision, now you're on clear notice. Mm. So it makes it more costly in some ways to do business in California. And Uber, Lyft, and many others are going to find out. So in the last show when I said Look at what happened with all this American and Disability Act, ADA litigation right. years yep. later. Watch what happens. You know, you did a show with Mike on predictions. Right. Let's do some legal predictions here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some of what will happen even before the end of this year, this calendar year, mm -hmm. maybe even before the election of this year, mm -hmm. 
certainly before the end of this year, will be class action cases filed against gig economy employers saying you are not abiding by the law. You have to abide by the law. And if you don't abide by the law, there's going to be big, big financial consequences. And you will see those public company stocks, Uber, Lyft, maybe even Airbnb. I'm trying to think of how the Airbnb argument goes because usually a homeowner is not an employee E of a company that is renting their home for them. Mm -hmm. Usually you're more of a customer. Right. But there's also a customer that's called a tenant. Right. Right. So this is <laughs> this is what Uber wants to say. We're just the intermediary yes. information system. Exactly. We're more like Airbnb than we are like a taxi cab company. We are actually just a technology company in the middle. I mean if you buy that theory then basically these information silos become free of a lot of law oh, yeah. and maybe a lot of employment law and of course that makes people who are trying to run like the taxation of the California government with withholding mm -hmm. say well wait a minute we have all these people are they paying enough in taxes is there withholding I mean it has other consequences yeah. to it yeah wow well there's a lot to this to unwrap so you think uh, we have about five minutes left just to summarize yes. as much as we can so you think that before the end of the year certainly there's going to be some ramifications. There's going to be some lawsuits around. Tsunami-style yeah. litigation accelerated far faster than the American with Disability Act. That took a few decades for the lawyers to wake up and say, man, there's a gravy train of violations. Why there. would that happen so quickly? The world be changed? Be or? Because the um, nature of the number of, of violators or oh, the nature okay. of the mass. Potential. Yeah, the mass number of employees who are unpaid is so much larger than the individual people in wheelchairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because a lot of those people in wheelchairs are like, yeah, they didn't have the right thing, but you know, I'll let it go. Yeah, I hear and you. then there were a few that were like massive repeat litigants. The employees are more like, yeah, I'm a group. I'm in Uber. I'm pretty easy to identify. I've got it on my license mm -hmm. plate. I've got that thing lit up. And that data is so in the face of the lawyers mm -hmm. who are saying, why aren't these people doing the right thing? In fact, I will even go further. And I'll say, I think Airbnb, maybe maybe not immediately, may take a little longer. <coughs> We're going to see some weird spin there where it becomes like, do you know that these homeowners are actually becoming like your employees? Mm -hmm. And you're running a hotel system? Yeah, they happen to own the property too, right. which is a little weird, right? <laughs> it's like, when have you ever heard of a... a person who's cleaning a room, they own the room as well, yeah, right? right? But a lot of a lot of people are starting to think, well, all the direction and control that they impose on their base, mm -hmm. say the room has to have white sheets and it has to have four pillows and it has to have like, they have like a whole friggin' checklist mm -hmm. of things that they want right. their quote unquote hosts. Mm -hmm. Well, what's a host? <laughs> think about that. Yeah. What's a host? Yeah. Well, I always think of a host as someone who greets you as a yeah, restaurant, right? right? Well, you're the host, but you're a host in your house. Well, in some cases, it's not even your house. It's like you rented the mm -hmm. place and you're subletting it, probably illegally, yeah. but probably, you know, questionably, maybe even under a city law that you shouldn't do it. So there's all these layers to it, and I bet there will be some class action lawyer who will say, I think AB5 even covers them mm. and forces oh, them to rethink yeah. who is an employee and who is an employee. So this gig Boy. economy is starting to get yeah. pushed back. And, you know, it's hard to imagine. They're already losing money. I mean, it's a funny thing. I don't think Uber or Lyft or any of these companies have ever made a dime of profit. Not even close. And, you know, you look at it and you say, you can't really imagine that the taxi cab business can compete on these prices for what's charged. I mean, I came back from San Francisco I wasn't the one who ordered it. The lawyer I was with ordered the black car. Okay. It was like 40 bucks to go from San Francisco to Palo Alto. We had four people How in the car. How do you with that? That was like 10 bucks each. Yeah. You know, the price for a Caltrain ticket would have been close to that. Right. It's like you can't even compare mm -hmm. that. I mean, in a way, you could say to yourself, what's really going on is that worker behind that wheel of that car really wants that business, and there's so many of them. They can price in a way where they're essentially killing what was an hour of time for maybe a net 20 mm -hmm. bucks, and if there's no tip, it's it's.
barely worth it considering right. all the wear and tear on the car, right? Boy, that's going to open up a whole new... Right. <laughs> yeah, to right but that. to the small yeah. company, obviously, the Airbnbs and the Ubers and the Lyfts, they all have, you know, mega forces right. of employed exactly. lawyers, right. outside lawyers. They're not the real target of this message. The target of this message is you have a company, <laughs> it's starting to grow, it's starting to succeed, you've historically used all independent contractors, mm-hmm. that's always a red flag, no employees at all. People that are in your office that look and smell and act as other employees, mm-hmm. that looks bad as well. They carry business cards, that's like strike three. Yeah. They're only working for you, that's strike four. <laughs> you know, they have the phone number on the yeah. desk. I mean, you know, it's all these strikes against you. Right. And at some level, if you don't start to recognize you have to comply, then get ready somewhere down the road, unless you're awfully lucky, you will probably get sued and you will probably have to do some type of accounting. Yeah. And that accounting will not just be, well, I owe them, you know, 50 bucks each. It'll be like, you owe them this much, plus penalties, plus statutory damages, plus interest, plus attorney's fees. And it might be three times what the real wages yeah. would have otherwise been. So you kind of made a case for um, anybody listening to this show or later downloading it and understanding if they have a small company or work for someone or representative, they need to talk to someone like you to make sure they're doing the right thing, right? I thought you were going to say, move out of California. No, well, that too. That too. That too. There's a lot of those, let me tell you. Everybody I hear that story. I I mean, look, California is the land of opportunity, and yes, it has laws. Other states have laws too, but I think getting the right advice thinking the right way. There are ways where if you don't want to manage the workforce, you can have other companies become your PEO, you know, your professional employment right. organization. They take the paperwork load. Obviously, they charge you. You're going to pay a higher price. you got to price that into your services. So the question is, can you compete? So going into the formation of the business, you have to think through how do you compete with the headcount you need mm-hmm. to make the business work? Because sometimes a business looks great on paper mm-hmm. at start, but then once you get off the race, yeah. wow, we actually have to do a lot of service right. level support right. to make this work. And we've got to use employees. Mm-hmm. We can't use people in Manila or in somewhere in the Far East mm-hmm. to answer the phone. It's got to be people in this time zone, maybe in this office, maybe with this local number, maybe even with a presence. Mm-hmm. Like at some level, you could say the Apple stores recognize you actually have to handhold some yeah. customers you have to get customers to buy your products and use your products well. The fanatic, independent helper of a customer, like the Tesla guy did for me today, that's just not going to carry yeah. the day when the volumes get to right. millions of people. So if you want to join the Tesla cult, yes, there you or go. you need legal advice, there you go. Jack Russo is here to help you. Or you need help with your iPhone. <laughs> or your iPhone. Yeah. Right. So before we sign off, yes. remember, because this should actually, I hope it triggers people, seriously, all kidding aside, yeah. anybody who owns this business, small business, involved with the business, yes. on the board of directors or whatever, yes. you should really be concerned and maybe get consultation about this. Sure, right? of course. Right. So how do they reach you? Yeah, six, we actually answer the phone. <laughs> That's always good. 650-327-9800. Yeah. And we have offices in Palo Alto. We get people sometimes that just walk in we occasionally because they walk by the office. Hey, you know. I'd like to sit down with you. We <laughs> sometimes do accommodate, although yeah. please don't barge yeah. in our office. You've got to be careful. <laughs> be careful what you ask yeah. for. But we did have a client, I guess, last week that walked in, and people were like, what just happened? I said, well, there are people that literally walk in, and they're like, who are you? And you seem to be a lawyer. And by the way, you have five stars on Google. Mm-hmm. When you search Google, you're like, there are no lawyers that have five stars on yeah. Google with that many. Co- I don't know, <laughs> that's what the woman said to me that walked in. You're the only law firm in town that has five Look stars from like 40 or 50 happy clients. Other lawyers, like three stars, two stars, wow. and they're big names. And she showed me on the app. She said, that's why I walked in. So that's great. It was an interesting <laughs> concept. <laughs> There's your marketing. <laughs> it, it, lit, it lit people up. So, yeah, 650-327-9800. Of course, email is a typical first contact these days. So it's jack, J-C-K, at computerlaw.com. And, yes, offices in Palo Alto and in San Francisco. And we meet you 
either place once we arrange it. Usually it's not a walk-in, but yeah. occasionally it is. <laughs> and, you know, we spend a little time with no charge up front just to see if we can help you. Mm -hmm. We'll tell you up front. If we can't help right. you, we can't help you. Right. But if we can help you, we're happy to help you. And usually it's a long-term relationship, so it's worth, you know, spending some time. It is, yes. Uh, they do a great job. Personal experience. Gosh, we've known each other for over 20 years. When I left the industry in 98, I figure, I figure that by the time we get to 10,000 shows, you'll be a billionaire, <laughs> and I'll be your in-house lawyer. I hope so. And we'll be one driving these days, One of these days, we're going to get paid to be talking. <laughs> yeah. Well, you get paid to talk. <laughs> no, no, I, no, no, and I, I should end no, I should, I should with, with this story, because if I don't have with this story, I'm going to forget it, but every so often on weekends, my wife, my lovely wife, I have to say that, and I... <laughs> go up to our, our place at the beach and yep. there's a little tiny church that we go to on Sunday morning uh -huh. and the uh, pastor of the church he's got to be I don't know he's getting older I won't say 90 but he's yeah. getting older and he walked up to me and he said you have a great deep voice. Would you would you mind doing the first or second reading? <laughs> no, no, wait. Here's the punchline. This is the punchline <laughs> story. You're a contract uh, pastor. <laughs> Go ahead. Anyway, I'm not an employee. Yeah. I'm a fan. I'm, right. I'm, I'm a really funny. happy patron yeah. of that Go church, ahead. little tiny church. Yeah. And I get up there and I do the reading. And after the church thing is over, I swear, and I'm sure Lee was yeah. very proud of me, all of the women, because of course most of the older men have all died, so it's all the women. Or they can't like, hear. They were all like, <laughs> you have the most beautiful voice that wow. we've ever heard. Can we get you to come on the choir? <laughs> I literally, they said that to me. And my wife was like, you know, there actually is something about your voice. And they were all like, we want you to read all the readings. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can see like, the readings. I'm not sure about the quiet. <laughs> <of> the <readings. laughs> anyway, I got a kick out of that because good. I said to them, there are jurors that have said that to yeah. me after cases that we've tried to say, we could listen to Mr. Russo's voice all day long. Well, that's, I'll tell you, it's a big benefit because we've all been around people, whether it be in trials or yes. business or podcasts, yes. where yes. the voice is pretty annoying. And it's, right? it's, it's a fact, and yeah. I think, and, and, and I should end on this note too, which is, there's a judge that's experimenting, a federal judge, mm -hmm. in fact, which is hard to believe, experimenting with. He doesn't want a written brief. He wants, like, the equivalent right. of a podcast. He wants you to send him an audio MP3 file no of your brief. And get this, he's like, there's too much paperwork in the federal courts. You give me your best argument in, let's call it a, I'm going to say he puts a time limit. I'm not sure he does, but he puts a word limit. Uh -huh. Let's call it a five-minute audio brief. You send that to the opposing lawyer. They got a five-minute reply. I'm going to listen to that in my car. Because he must have a long commute, is yeah. what I'm figuring. And he said, I don't want all that paperwork. I'm guessing he's tired of reading, and he's saying, I'd rather hear the tone of the argument. So just audio, though. Audio. audio. Interesting. Audio, no yeah. video. Interesting. So I'm saying to myself, maybe there's an innovation here. And the lawyers who have been interviewed have said he has reduced the docket time and made decisions faster. That. Think about that. Change maker. What it says is maybe we're going to get to the point where it's the time of Lincoln where your audio dramatic ability to deliver a argument mm -hmm. in audio becomes even more important wow. than writing. That's a good story. I mean, and if that cuts the cost, yeah. because he says, look, you can make citations, but keep them simple. Just make the argument. I more or less know mm -hmm. the law in an yeah. area, and I'll tell you if I don't. Think about what that does. Maybe it actually makes briefs become briefer because mm -hmm. they're audio. And you got to get to the point. That's good for you gotta everybody. you got to get to the point. That's good for it's everybody. It's a good thing. Right? So right before we sign off, I actually have one more now. Jack Russo could be what they call a voiceover. Right, so if anybody's looking for voiceover, this is a guy who'll come, to your, that's he'll come in, to your church. In your I love that story. And I'll do stand up comedy along the way. There it is. Right. All right, Absolutely. well, thank you, those, for tuning in today. Those that are uh, following us on Facebook, we appreciate that very much. It's reradiolive.com. And uh, send your friends, family members, co workers to the podcast and pass them around, have them download as well. Thanks again for following us this afternoon. Have a great day. Thank time. you to your lovely daughter yes, for supporting right. us here. <laughs> thank you, Stephanie. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. 
Discover more at reradiolive.com. 